Hello, my friends and my fellow Harmonauts. I am Sam Harrison and welcome to this week's Harmony Garage. Now this week we are actually going to get into a little bit more of the technical details of what <laughs> what's going wrong with your car. Uh, what are those weird sounds that you could be hearing? Uh, at the end of the day, don't worry, everything is going to be okay. Uh, but we are going to talk about it a little bit because this week we have dealt with a little bit of rough roads. Uh, we've had some main net instabilities that we're working on resolving. Um, but first, as you know, I read your comments and I love to engage and talk about the things that you're talking about. So I want to talk to crypto. <laughs> crypto. That's where my brain is at. Uh, I want to talk to CyberSoul. CyberSoul said, I, for one, am very glad to follow this discussion. CyberSoul is not just talking about the Harmony Garage. He, she, it is talking about the developer call every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time at harmony.one slash Zoom, Z-O-O-M. Uh, we get on a call with developers in the Harmony community. It has been fantastic. We've done two of them so far, and they've asked important questions and interesting things, and we've responded, and there is a regular dialogue that goes back and forth, um, which is exactly how we want things to work, right? We do not want to be in an ivory tower, as somebody said, you know, working on our projects. We want to be part of the community, so much so that we're also putting together DAOs. And I'll talk more about the DAOs a little bit later in in the update, but things are going great on the DAO front and they're going to accelerate pretty soon. Uh, the next comment from YouTube I want to, to address is you too. Sam, I love how you're always in a happy mood and your ego is so nice. Keep doing what you are doing. Um, I'm not always in a good mood. It just seems like it because I'm an actor. I'm not. I'm really not. I suck at acting. I'm horrible at it. Uh, <laughs> never play poker with me because I will lose all of my money to you. Um, but this week has put a little bit of a challenge on that, right? Like the, the main net instabilities were not easy. To Otis's point over on Discord, Otis said that he knows that the team is looking on ways to improve. And this example that's happened this last week lands that ecosystem growth category. And he thinks that this is a pretty pertinent example. I understand the dev team's busy. It has limited capacity. However, communication itself needs to be at the forefront. There needs to be a liaison of sorts between the dev team and the validators, dev, et cetera, about network degradation is the word that he used. What is happening? How long it will take? And this way, people won't feel like they're being ignored or that there's a bigger or larger issue that the Harmony team is sometime, somehow trying to hide. Otis, you're 100% correct. What I want to point out is you over there on Discord, you're in the perfect place because that is where Harmony, the team, holds their internal conversations whenever we message people because we are completely remote. It's one of the reasons why I'm in a garage and not an office building is because I work remotely as most of us have done over the last year. And um, we communicate on the Discord channel. So harmony.one slash mainnet nodes, nodes is plural, N-O-D-E-S, mainnet dash nodes. That is a, a invitation to join our Discord server. Go there, take a look. If you have any issues, tag Harmony team and we'll respond. And that is probably the easiest, most straightforward, most rapid way of getting regular communication from us. We are everywhere, um, including Reddit, including Telegram, including uh, Discord, including Twitter, including Slack. But the place that we are constantly paying attention to our notifications is on Discord. So you'll get the best results out of that. Now let's dive in a little bit about what's happened this last week, because I think this is really important to see how it unfolded and to get your feedback on how we did A, responding, B, communicating this. Now, over the weekend, we noticed that there were some um, unnatural transaction flows that were happening. At first, we were excited because those transaction flows were blowing up through the roof, and we were excited that we were hitting 2 million, 3 million, 4 million transactions 
in a couple of days, which should have been our, our first indication that something may have been a little fishy. Um, but then first thing Monday morning, we started discussing on Discord about what was happening, right? We started, you know, Leo and RJ and, and Ganesh, they all started kind of digging in and saying, hey, what's this? Hey, what's that? Let me take a look. Let me get into it. Now on Wednesday, so this is two days later, um, Ganesh had done enough investigation. He, I think, you know, he, he was spotlighted what he thought what the problem was and he was prepared to make some recommendations. But he raised a couple really important points that I think it's important that we highlight here. Um, he said on Wednesday morning, there are already some potential fixes underway and they're currently being tested on the test net. But this fix is not very simple. We need to have a thorough analysis and provide a solution that does not try to censor the spam or take a centralized approach. This is vital. There are a lot of ways in which spam transactions and legitimate transactions can be mistaken for each other. And we do not want to be centralized, number one. We do not want to have any level of ability to censor transactions on the chain. And so our solution needs to slip very carefully in between these two issues. Um, so that's first. The second thing he wanted to point out is in their analysis at this point, Wednesday morning, the problem was identified over the weekend and the impacts, especially on the DEXs, were not crystal clear until Wednesday, okay? Um, and so that solution that we rolled out on Wednesday was mainly for mitigating the impact on the DEXs, which is great. Now, we continue to investigate. We continue to look at it. We continue to talk on Discord. And that is actually a little bit of our issue is because we were communicating on Discord, that message and that interaction was not getting out beyond that particular channel of communication. Um, I know that the people over on Telegram and Reddit were feeling very much in the dark about what was happening, which is not the experience we want them to have. Um, so Thursday morning, our community manager, Wolf, he put out a, a statement saying, yes, of course, we're aware of what's going on and we're working on fixing it. Here is a short-term, hack is the wrong word, but it's the short-term workaround which is for those who are running dApps and for users to make sure that their transactions are processed, increase your transaction gas price um, to make sure it's accepted and is no longer pending. That's a pretty straightforward mechanism to make sure that you increase the priority of your transaction so that it could be more important than any of these spam attacks. Um, now, I want to get to kind of the stuff that happened this morning. One of the reasons why this update, I filmed a completely separate update two or three days ago. I There's enough information, new information about the, the mainnet instability um, that I wanted to film another one today. RJ came out this morning and he talked about what was happening. This is what he said. Based on various evidence of the transaction content and the sending pattern, most of the increased transactions are very likely spams that are part of a targeted attack taking advantage of our negligible limit on minimum transaction gas prices. The floor for gas in Harmony is one quintillionth of a one. Right. That means that that's one with 18 zeros after it. And no, I don't have that information at my fingertips. I had to Google that. Um, but that is a minuscule, minuscule piece. And so if you put your transaction that low and there's plenty of space in the blocks for those transactions, you're going to create a spam. It's not going to cost you anything to spam the network. So what we have done is that the solution here is to update the minimum transaction gas price requirement to one one billionth of a one, right? And that's the same as ethers, right? Or ethereums. Um, so this is really good information to have. This is really good um, uh, feedback that we're getting from RJ. Really importantly, he also says, okay, what can you do? What can our community do? 
Blockchains are not monolithic creatures. We are not based in one ivory tower yelling out the top of our lungs, hey, do this, hey, do that. We have a community that we also need to engage, receive feedback from, and give pointers to. So our, uh, RJ said, from the community, for validators specifically, over the next day or two, we will be issuing a patch. We'll be issuing um, a new release. And so you'll need to update your nodes binary. That's very important. So validators, pay attention and watch out for that. For users and developers using Harmony tools or software development kits, SDKs, um, including our exchange partners, hello exchanges, make sure you update that, that transaction gas price minimum. Um, that will be really important because then it'll supersede any of the, the spam attacks that are going on. Um, so that is... RJ's message, but I wanted to read the last bit of it because it's really important. RJ would like to thank our community for the continuous support and understanding. And we are working nonstop to make our network better and stronger against attacks. For any questions and issue reports, please go to our Discord channel, harmony.one slash mainnet dash nodes and tag harmony dash team for help. Thank you. So from RJ to all of you, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. And thank you for listening very much. Okay, so that handles the, the, the question of the mainnet stability from this week. Whew, that's a long update. Um, let's dive into a few of the other important updates. Uh, we touched on this a little bit at the top. Um, you guys, you have your own DAO. The community DAO is now live. Elections start on, or uh, elections start on Monday, right? It's not fully elections, but go to talk.harmony.one and put in your candidates for the five seats of the initial council of the community DAO. Now, to explain a little bit about what the initial council should do and should be about, just so you know, first on who you're voting for, second, if you want to run yourself, which I highly recommend. Um, the initial council just writes the operating agreement. I used to refer to that as a constitution, but I think that's too complicated a word. That carries too many, that has too much baggage. So it's just an operating agreement. It's saying, okay, this is how the DAO is going to run elections, and this is what the DAO is going to focus on. Straightforward. Um, so the initial council will be seated for our anticipation three months. That's it, right? So our community DAO will be sat, uh, elections will finish by the end of the month and they'll be sat at the beginning of, of uh, July. And then hopefully by the end of September, the elections for what we call the persistent council or the one that you know continues um, until the end of their term uh, should be by the tail end of September. <laughs> that is, it's so incredibly exciting. But the community DAO is not the only thing. We also have the validator DAO who's hard at work on drafting their operating agreement and we have many other DAOs coming. I am actually working in, in setting up the validator DAO and setting up the community DAO um, and working closely around uh, protocol DAOs and developer DAOs. I've been learning a lot of lessons about how to make this process. Um, the, term, <laughs> the term that I use in business school was scalable, but really how to make it bigger and larger and, and to be able to support multiple things going on in parallel at the same time. And so I'll be writing a lessons learned post or blog about that over the next um, day or two. So please pay attention and watch for that because this is how we just blow the doors off of what Harmony is capable of. Um, so that's really exciting. Now, the other thing from as far as an engagement and an employment perspective, I want to give a shout out to uh, Peter Abila's new job posting that he has been, he's working on filling. He's been doing interviews. We've had some fantastic candidates, but it's not posted, it's not filled yet. So get involved. Take a look at at Shmula and look for his post about a content strategist. You guys are constantly saying that we need better and more marketing. And I agree. You know, we need to get the word out about how amazing our community is, how amazing the technology is. And, you know, the great socks that we can all, I don't, I don't know. I just have white socks on today. Sometimes I like fun socks. I met Vitalik once. He had pizza socks on. That was cool. Um, anyway, so this content strategist, uh, he'll be work, he or she will be working on 
blog material, on social media material, on, on videos, on email marketing, and so many more things. And it really should drive a huge impact on the, the, the knowledge and, and mind share that Harmony has. Okay, so uh, moving on a little bit. Um, so we talked briefly about the developer call. Thursday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific time, harmony.one slash Zoom, Z-O-O-M. Um, and you can join us and have a conversation every Thursday. Bring up your developer-focused questions. We invite you. I think it'll be fantastic. We are currently putting together our developer captains. So again, I don't want to scare anybody off. These are just people who help us organize this community of developers, kind of figure out who we have, who we don't have, where you're located, what you're interested in building, what you're not interested in getting involved in. Um, visit harmony.one, excuse me, visit talk.harmony.one, saying it way too much, this, this call. Uh, and you will see the developer introductions and you'll see people who are looking to be um, ways in which they can become a, a developer captain. So take a look at that. Look, say hi to all our new developers and join us on the dev call on Thursday mornings. I'll be there. Not next weekend, I have a conflict, but in general, I'll be there. All right, um, I think that really covers most of it. Um, oh, there is one other thing that I'm really excited about is the, the, the full integration with Travala. Uh, you guys, you can take your ones and go and buy 3 million different vacation activities. That's exciting. Let's go to Maui. Get a two-hour private lesson on paddleboarding. Be awesome. Um, so much fun. Uh, so that happened this week as well. Also, um, I know you guys are constantly asking about the Explorer version too. Um, last week, of course, we had a great conversation with Sahil about that and, and gave you a bunch of updates. I know because I'm watching the, the development chart that there are only a handful of very small issues that they're ironing out and they're finishing before they launch, which should be very soon. Um, I'm going to, you know, make sure Sahil has a little bit of, of leeway here with rolling this baby out. And it is his baby. He loves working on it. And, and we're really excited to bring this um, uh, Explorer V2 online to give us effectively feature parity with some of the other, you know, gold standards of Explorers out there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think there's anything else for the update itself. We did things a little bit differently this week. Um, yesterday, I had a fantastic sit down um, with the founder and CEO of a company called Timeless. Uh, this is Z Wang, who has known and been involved with Harmony since before it was Harmony, right? He has been going to the, the TJI Dreams with um, Steven for years. I mean, that's how Harmony came about, is Steven was getting people together in his backyard, cracking open a beer, doing some barbecue, and really coming together to, to figure out how to accomplish everybody's dream. And Harmony was came out of that. Um, anyway, so, so I sat down with Z. We had a great interview. We talked a lot about how the latent potential in a calendar application and how Timeless is, is working to capture that. And it is pretty brilliant. Um, I don't want to spoil anything because it's probably going to come out early week, next week or so. And it's, I enjoyed the conversation. Uh, I think it's great. I really hope that, that Z actually becomes one of my good friends that we hang out, play basketball, except for the fact that I suck at basketball, but we hang out and we chat about, you know, science fiction and, and, and the things that I find fun and interesting. In any way, take, watch for that coming out next week. Besides that, I think that's it for my updates for this week. I'm sorry there isn't anything more meaty. I figured the, the main net stability would be meaty enough for you all. Um, but yeah, so there you go. For those are the updates. Okay, so for the Harmony Garage for this week, I have been Samuel Harrison. Thank you again for joining me so much. Have a fantastic weekend. Have a fantastic week. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time.